Hi guys, it's Clinton here from Bat and Ball Cricket. Thanks for checking in for this episode. Guys, today we're looking at what's in my coaching or cricket warm-up related kit. So guys, let's get into this one. So the first thing to have a look at is the actual bag itself. So I've been using this uh, Greg Chapel Cricket Centre duffel bag. I've uh, got a good number of pockets and can help keep everything organised relatively inexpensive. Now what triggered me to put this kit together was I had been keeping a number of this stuff in my main kit and it eventually got started to get a little bit too heavy as the quality of the bags that I was using increased and got a little bit heavier. So I decided to move it out to a separate kit. Easy to organise easier to carry and having the item separate is just makes it functionally a bit easier. So guys basically I've got the everything set out here on the table in three kind of or four kind of distinct zones. First one here is pre-training session warm-up, net exclusive, shared items and field items only. So let's start at the end with uh, which are the non-cricket related ones. So I've got a rugby union ball and two really highly bouncy balls. Now, most of the time what's really good before a training session or in a warm-up session is to actually just have a game that's generally not cricket related just to give your brain an opportunity to switch on, get active and get your teammates or, or getting the team that you're coaching communicating with each other. So a game of rugby league, touch rugby league, is really, really good for that. This season, my team, before our matches, has been doing a combination game. It's kind of a cross or a blending of volleyball and of handball. And so that just becomes a, a, a whole piece of element or competition in itself as to who is leading in the, uh, in the tally. So we're going to go to the other end of the table, guys, and have a look at the items that are exclusive to uh, the field related pieces. So the first one here is a target stump. So this is just a Grey Nichols target stump that I've gone and customized and, and done, you know, jazzed up um, for, my, uh, for my club colors. The next one here is then a set of fielding gloves. Now these ones tend to be, I use these exclusively. These aren't a shared item, but they're a, a glove that actually has some padding on the inside of those hotspots. When you're doing a lot of catching in a training perspective, these just go and take some of that heat off your or off those hot spots. The last one here, guys, then is a, a catching bat. So it's a bat that's around about 20 centimetres short of what a usual bat can be. Now, cricket bats are designed to be used with two hands. If you're using a uh, if you're using a, a catching mitt on one hand and you're trying to hit balls with a full size bat in the other, it does become quite awkward and a bit cumbersome for that um, for that to work. All right, guys, coming uh, through to the middle section. Now, these are items that are blended, that I use, that are blended between the fielding-related drills and stuff that actually happens in the nets. And the first one of those are some markers. These are universally really helpful for fielding drills. Junior teams are notorious for coming off their marks that you might set them on if you're trying to get them to do fielding drills. And just have a marker that you want every player to come off is really helpful. When it comes across to the nets, you can set up channels that you want your bowlers to be bowling in between, markers that you're wanting them to aim for, or even if you're coaching a player that is batting, you can be setting up imaginary fielders on the side of the net. You can be putting markers down where you, or the direction that you want their footwork to be going to, or generally shots in the zones that you want them to be playing or avoiding. So really helpful. The middle section here is actually balls. Now as a rule, it's good to train with balls that you're going to be playing with. Some of the time that's not always practical. I've been in quite a lucky situation where I've been the captain of my uh, club team, which means that the older balls come to me and they go back into circulation for the team warm-ups. If you don't have that benefit and you want to be able to be putting a kit together, the best way to get a number of balls together isn't going out to buy them because balls generally start at around about $25 or $30 a ball. If you need to get up to half a dozen to a dozen, you're, you're talking upwards of $150. The best way to, uh, to get balls, if you can't accumulate them from your, your club environment, is to actually get onto Facebook Marketplace or onto Gumtree and try and find someone that's selling a full kit. 
Someone that's got out of the game, doesn't need their gear anymore, they often have two or three balls in their kit bag, and you're likely to be able to pick those up relatively cheaply. So sort of somewhere around about $5 to $10 a ball. So you can get together around about six balls, which is or half a dozen balls, which is generally what I recommend, and that'll set you back sort of roughly around about the $30 to $60 mark. A great way of getting the, getting the balls together. Last of the items that are shared is a baseball glove. Now, I find a baseball glove is exceptionally helpful when you're going to be uh, doing uh, coaching in a net. I like using the baseball glove not so much because of uh, the need to be catching balls, but from a protection perspective. If you're a right-handed thrower with a, with a sidearm or, or just doing throwdowns, then that hand can be taken out with the sidearm. Now it's a pretty good person to be able to drop that and catch the ball two hands, but if a ball does happen to get be hit back at you, if you have a baseball glove on, it's designed to be, to be, to be catching one-handed, and you've got that versatility to be able to have a hard leather product that can actually come and take the impact of a, of a ball rather than you getting hit. So I like using a baseball glove when, when coaching or, or doing throwdowns, from, a, from my protection perspective. A bit like those umpires that have the, the, the shield on their arm. It's, it's more from my protection perspective. When it comes to outfielding stuff, it reduces the number of people that you need to be doing a, a coaching or a fielding drill. You can have one set of drills running with the wicketkeeper and the slips fielders, and then you can have another drill being run with someone on the glove and the bat. It's a great way to maximize your training efficiency. Uh, baseball gloves aren't all that common in Australia, so if you're in Australia and needing to get one, you can find them again on places like um, Facebook Marketplace or on Gumtree. However, my most recent glove but prior to this one was one that I got from Heart Sport, a local based um, wholesaler here in Brisbane, for about $80. So that's a, that's a glove that's going to last you a good amount of time. This one I decided to get from the guys at Gloveworks, no sponsorship there at all. I've been able to get a fully customised glove for around about 150 Australian dollars. Uh, I was lucky and got a discount code, so it worked out to be about $120, but you can do a customization to your club colors, your name, your club, you know, whatever you'd like to do. The last piece here, guys, are the assisted throwers, uh, or a sidearm. Now, I've got two in here. The pink one stays mostly with my uh, main training kit, along with, the, uh, along with the baseball glove. It doesn't spend time in this actual warm-up kit, which is why I've got the white one. Now, I believe these are both sidearm pros, and the white one was just the original version and found not quite to be stiff enough, couldn't get the ball up to a high enough pace for those higher levels, and, uh, and so that's when sidearm went and produced the pink version, which is then the, the higher quality or the higher speed version. Both the pro, um, I, uh, I, I leave the white one in the warm up kit just in case guys, as they're wanting to, um, you know, when they're waiting to bat, if they want to go to the nets quickly and do some warm ups, you've got the thrower there to be able to, uh, to get in and to be able to do that. So guys, that pretty much rounds out everything that's in my uh, cricket coaching or warm up related kit. So you don't have to go and spend a whole stack load of money on putting together a kit. You can do it piece by piece as time progresses and that's exactly what I've done. I've gone and accumulated the kit over the last kind of seven or eight years. As always guys, if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you have seen through this video today, please don't hesitate in dropping those down into the comments section. You have, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I am a bit sporadic at releasing videos, so it's good for you to get that notification when I do release a, uh, a video. Right guys, this is Clinton from Bat and Ball Cricket. We'll catch you in the next instalment. Bye for now.